Hello, everyone, and welcome into CrushTheStreet.com. I'm Kenneth Amaduri, and I'm joined with the returning guest, Charles Nenner of the Charles Nenner Research Center. Center. I'm going to sound like Joe Biden right now. Uh, <laughs> Charles Nenner. He wished. Not- he wished. <laughs> <laughs> CharlesVenner.com. Hey, it's uh, uh, November 3rd, 2020. We have the election going on right now. The stock market has been volatile. It's been quite the boiling point of a year with everything going on with the health, with uh, what's been going on with uh, the stock market, the volatility, and suppression of news, suppression of, of facts when it comes to what's going on in the media. It's just such a crazy time, stripping of freedoms all around the world. So lots of consequences. We're going to be talking today with Charles and getting his thoughts on all of this. Charles, thanks for coming on Crush the Street with me today. Well, great to be back. Well, this interview is going to go out before election results. So uh, let's get your thoughts. I mean, general thoughts. The boiling point of 2020, everything going on this year, is it lining up with what you're seeing and what you're anticipating with the stock market and finances? Well, first of all, I just want to talk about social cycles and uh, that I am dealing with. So two years ago, already said like uh, there's a social cycle of 60, 65 years. The last uh, upheaval was in the 60s. So it's time for have a major revolution. So that's why you see all the countries having uh, very big uh, internal struggles. Talking about the markets, um, according to my system, we should go up one more time after the election and that will be the end of the bull. Uh, And then we're gonna have a very bad uh, stock market. Uh, And on the other side, uh, we will have one more serious rally in the bond market. So I don't think the economy is gonna pick up because the bonds could go to a new low in rates and uh, I still think we could have deflation. And I think the whole situation is based on hope. The uh, equity markets is, I think, the most expensive, the most extreme since I, I cannot even remember. And that's from a fundamental point of view. But as you know, I do cycles and I do price targets. And when cycles stop, like they do in a few weeks, then uh, the market should come down and uh, bonds bottom in a week or 10 days, that means interest rates will go down for a while again. Charles, what are your thoughts on oil in this current environment? Obviously, uh, with what we have as presidential candidates, the, the Joe Biden Harris uh, platform is to you know phase out fossil fuels. And then you have Trump on the other hand saying, hey, w- the US needs to stay competitive with energy. He's pro oil. We obviously look at the, the, you know, Chevron and Exxon Mobil. These stocks are, you know, in this bear market trend. What are your thoughts on oil in this environment? Well, you know, we do very specific work with cycles. So we were short oil and it hit the price target. Now we're 3450. And now we expect it to go back over 40. But my longer term cycles are down for oil. So I see lower oil, oil prices for a while. Charles, what about big tech? In anything significant when it comes to that? Obviously, Facebook, Twitter, Google, Apple, these stocks have led the markets up here. And, you know, it does seem like if Trump becomes the president, there's going to be some more resistance to what they've been able to do in terms of really controlling people, controlling the news and what people post and So anyways, does that at all give you any instinct as to, hey, this might be some resistance if Trump becomes president to these big tech giants? Well, my computer does have instincts, at least until now, I didn't figure it out. So my work is very mathematical and it doesn't deal with what's going to happen and why it happens. It only knows that if something goes up, how high it goes up, if it goes down, how many days, how many weeks it goes down until well, what level it goes down because it's based on the fact that markets have no free choice. Uh, all the investors neutralize itself. So they're very predictable and the news always comes later. So, um, you know, probably much more about these things than I do, but I, I saw that the Amazon cycle is down for a while. Uh, so whoever becomes president and leave it up to your interpretation, doesn't matter, but Amazon is for the moment, it's not the stock we want to own. So having said that, what are your thoughts and what does your cycle analysis say about gold and silver? You know, if you do see 
uh, an end of a bullish cycle here for stocks. Is that positive for gold and silver? Well, I also like to, like to make interpretations. I do say everything separate. And we're bullish on gold and our price target is two and a half thousand. And for the cycle is, is the longer term cycles up for, for a long period, even for years. In that this, it's, that's despite what we're seeing in the short term here. Because obviously when we have these massive downward moves in, in the stock market, we see massive sell-offs with gold and silver on the days of the, the big legs down. Well, yeah, but we don't know why. I mean, it could be if stocks go down that uh, people want to get the money out of the funds and the funds have to sell some of the gold in order to pay the investors back. So what exactly the reason is, I don't know. But I look at things separately and I think uh, we continue to see a bull market in gold. Yeah. Well, uh, what are your thoughts on the US dollar going forward here? Obviously, uh, a lot of money printing you know, massive amounts here in 2020 in response to the COVID crisis. Is this going to be an ongoing trend here where we see a, a devaluation in the currency? Or is that not a concern for you if we do see stocks uh, see a major leg down here? Well, I don't think the, uh, the dollar is in a wide trading range. And I think it will continue for now. I know people are very much afraid for the dollar. I'm not. I think the trading range will continue. Of course, the buying power during years already goes down. Uh, you have this Big Mac uh, situation that people look, how much is a Big Mac in dollars in Japan, in Europe, in the United States, and you see that the dollar buying power is much lower than, than it was years ago. And I, can think, I think it will continue to go down. Okay. Well, and then your thoughts on silver in relation to gold, is it a similar trade in your opinion or are they a little more disconnected? Because obviously silver has the industrial component. Well, it is a bit disconnected to my surprise. According to the gold silver situation, the rates show silver should start outperforming our gold, but it's already looks like that for a while. And for the moment, I stick with the gold and the gold stocks. By the way, you can have a nice dividend if you have gold stocks and then also make some profits if the gold price goes up, which brings the price of the gold stocks up. For the moment, I don't see silver outperforming, but I guess the bull market will continue in silver also. Yeah. Do you follow Bitcoin at all, uh, Charles? As yes, yes, we as follow, of course we follow Bitcoin. Uh, what are your thoughts on it uh, in this environment with Bitcoin hitting 13,800? Is this something that you see uh, short term or, or are you uh, expecting uh, a, bit, a major correction here? Well, our price target on Bitcoin is 14,180, if you want to know. And the cycle is up. And we do a lot with GBTC because GBTC is a, is a fund that, uh, that you can invest in. Uh, and buy it, I think it's an ETF or what it is, and it follows the Bitcoin. And um, that's up already very big, and it has another 5 6 7% to go on the upside. We have the cycle, so it goes like this, that you know, we tell them when the, 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 our investors when the Bitcoin tops, at what level tops, and then if it goes down, we tell them how many days, how many weeks it goes down. So there's a lot to say about it, it just depends on what period. Uh, sure. But for the moment, the cycle is up for another 10 days, and we're almost reaching our upside price target. Well, Bitcoin's been good to us here at Crush the Street. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate the thoughts on that. Um, well, and just share some closing thoughts then. I mean, we've really kind of covered the, the different sectors. Uh, share some closing thoughts here as we go uh, into the end of the year here. Uh, Q4, I mean, new president, potentially same president. You know, chaos, riots, looting, you know, stock market volatility. I mean, what are, what are you generally saying to people? How, how big of an impact is this going to be going forward? Well, the, the mess is going to continue for a while. Riots, whatever, whoever is president. Uh, looking from Europe, I find it amazing that you can have a shop and uh, you work hard all your life and they start burning it down and nobody's helping you. The police is standing aside. We totally have no clue how that happens. So I don't know how they're going to clean up uh, the situation in the United States. What I tell people always, don't look so much at the news. If you want to make money, you have to understand the underlying system. And I always say, you know, if you go look at our work, you can have it for free for four weeks. Go to charlesnander.com. Just see how professionals look at markets. 
and don't follow the news because usually that doesn't end well. Especially the stock market, be sure that before the end of the year, you're out of the stock market because I expect a lot of downside risk. That's good stuff there. Uh, well, there you have it, everyone. Charles Denner of charlesdenner.com. Visit his work, try it out. Uh, it's a great subscription service. So Charles, thanks for coming on Crush the Street with me today. You're welcome.